No. No. And and the um, festivals. No. In Copenhagen. Or? I guess some of the cinemas here are open, but the film festival has been was uh, was cancelled during COVID. CPH picks. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of the films were made available online, which was good. I guess. Yeah. I guess that's what it's going to be like for a while now. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've seen notifications that festivals happening in various locations in spring of 2021 are already online. Imagine if Cannes is cancelled for the second year in a row, that's going to be uh, yeah. quite a disaster. Yeah. I can't help but think that it means something that Baccarat came out the year before this year. Yeah, sometimes I, I wonder if, what would we do if we had it now and, and, and the release was canceled. It would mm. be very sad. But we got it all. It was, it was a wonderful time in Brazil. A year ago, exactly, next week. Really? Yeah, yeah did, did very well. And it was like about to come out in theaters in the US when I saw you guys, right? It came out and then four or five days later, the cinemas shut down. But it must, but then they, they, they seem like they've done a pretty good job at the Kino Marquis and yeah, getting it very out well. That. Yeah, they've done very well. And people seem to be discovering the film little by little, which is interesting. Yeah. In the US and, and other countries. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be on Criterion, right? It, it is now, the Criterion now. channel. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And I just learned that I can access the Criterion channel. Uh, there's a loophole, uh, tech, which I'm sure they leave it open technically. And I never knew. I thought it was closed for anyone outside the US. Oh, I thought so too, because I have a friend in actually on a, someone else in Denmark who can't access it. You can just uh, you can use a VPN. Yeah. Yeah. For, for the for the subscription, but then afterwards you don't even need a VPN. Hmm. Um, so it's you can see it. Bit expensive, but should we start and then Carlos, you and I can keep letting in people if they trickle in. Copy that. <laughs> um, so shall we? Sure. Yes. Um, thank you everybody for coming. Um, this is very, very exciting. Um, so welcome to the event of Moving Image Alliance or Hunter Moving Image Alliance or MIA, a collaborative forum for viewing and discussing video and film based art. This will be in the fall, a regular um, series of events about once a month, a little more, usually on Wednesdays. We're currently co-organized by students and faculty. Um, Anthony Howley, A.K. Burns, Daniel Voshkov, myself, and Anna Sophie. Thank you for joining us for this sixth installment, or seventh, right? Um, with a Q&A with the artists um, Kleber and Juliano. Um, the talk will be moderated by Anna Sophie, um, and we will be discussing their fabulous film Baccaro. Um, I will be moderate, I will be sorry, managing. So um, we will start with Anna Sophie leading the conversation. And then for the last 30, 20 minutes, um, we will just have a Q&A. So anyone who wants to ask a question can write, type it in the chat. 
or um, I mean, if you want to ask it yourself, that's wonderful. And we can just put you um, on video or I can just ask it for you. Um, so Anna Sophie, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you, Lena. Um, first of all, first of all, I want to say that it's uh, such a huge honor to have you guys with us here. Um, and I want to thank you a lot, personally, for putting Sonia Braga and Urukia in the same film, which is a huge uh, dream come true for me personally. <laughs> um, and I have. <laughs> that was a that was that was a very wonderful thing. Um, I have a few questions. Um, some of them are a little bit long-winded, so bear with me. Um, I'd kind of like to start out by talking about some of the um, the use of grand narrative tropes in the film, specifically kind of within great. Greek fatalism and Marxist utopianism. Um, stylistically, your film has been called a sci-fi Western, although I kind of think of it more as folklore dressed as a genre film, kind of like, um, like Cervantes, but with iPhones. Um, and I think that stylistically, it encompasses the allure of being a genre film, but it kind of possesses this essence of myth and magic along with an approach to good and evil that remains ruthlessly unsentimental and unaccommodating throughout, which kind of makes it feel very old. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about your understanding of the relationship between the treatment of genre and folklore in cinema and in your film. Who starts, who begins? You. <laughs> Well, I think um, the the very f the very first thing that me and Juliano discussed right in the beginning was was the whole thing of making a, a film, and of course making a Brazilian film because we are Brazilian and within Brazil we come from the northeastern region, which places us in in a chunk of the country which is already uh, part of something bigger, and if you look at how Brazil was wired and, and, and formed as a nation. And if you look at the media in Brazil, and if you look at culture, um, we come from a region which always got the, the shorter end of the stick in terms of representation. So the whole thing begins not only uh, from the Brazilian point of view, but also when you make a genre film, you make a Brazilian genre film which feeds on, to paint a larger picture, uh, it paints on Hollywood. Uh, it, it, a lot of the references that, that people have comes from, they come from Hollywood. So when you make a film and you change the point of view and you decide to go and tell a story where the point of view is completely upside down, and the cool people now are the Viet Cong and not, uh, let's say the American side, which we grew up watching. And that creates or generates some confusion, which I find uh, extremely exciting. And me and Juliana, we discussed a lot of this. So a lot of the ideas in the film there, they come from uh, uh, genre conventions we also have villains and we have the good people, but they are turned upside down in a way that is, unfortunately, it's not so common. And, um, and I, love, I love the way it turned out, not only in the script when people read it, but also the, the final, you know, the, fi the film which has been finalized and, and, and shown in so many countries because the reaction is, it's almost like they're, everything is very familiar in Bacurau, but at the same time, at the same time, the wires have been connected in the wrong, not the wrong, but in different, the unusual um, uh, terminals. 
and I find the the overall effect in terms of um, of a dramatic effect in terms of what you're watching I find it really interesting to observe the reactions not only in Brazil but of course in in, in many different places where we have screened the film uh, in New York City at the New York Film Festival there was a wonderful reaction from from a gentleman in the back of the uh, Alice Tully Hall his question was why are the Americans the heavies and I thought that was a truly wonderful uh, reaction because I think he basically spent his whole life watching one single point of view where the American experience doesn't really show itself as as being villainous and in this film we have uh, a different way of portraying uh, the villains and 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 they come from England, Germany, and United States. So, I think the, by rewiring some of these tropes, we have we have uh, basically made a classic film, wh which obeys the the classic um, the the classic uh, aspects of genre. But at the same time, with a, a, a different point of view, which uh, is exactly what we we wanted to do, and and from a um, strictly from a Brazilian point of view, we also have the characters who come from the southeast of the country, and that really means a lot for Brazilians. Uh, it's a major topic of discussion in the film, because also. Uh, one of the things that made us want to do the film was a number of films that we saw in a festival that that's where Bacurau began actually. Me and Juliana, we were in a festival and we saw a number of documentaries and, and they had this patronizing thing and, uh, and four of them were about small communities and faraway places and, and we just did not really go along with with whatever it was that they were trying to show and trying to uh and their discourse we we just found them kind of um you know bringing uh a, a, the point of view from the big city and 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 pushing it down people's throats you know the characters and very condescending and, and this is exactly what what it was the initial spark for um, for making Bacurau. This was uh, kind of uh, the last drop, drop of uh, drop of water, because we have this in our culture in many, many levels. We have this in the journalism, uh, in the film industry, in the in the documentaries. We have this in in, in the music, in, the, in arts, in in this society. Uh, people from television. the northeast uh, and television, uh, soap operas, and, and te teledramaturgy. Uh, the, the problem is the representation of uh, th these people from, from the Northeast uh, as naive people or something like that. And when we realize that uh, uh, we, we, as filmmakers, we are doing the same shit. We are doing the same thing. Because we know all those filmmakers, we, we, we share ideas with some of them. And now... Now maybe it's time to, to do something to talk about this and started like this. And uh, it, it was back in 2009 and uh, some years passed and uh, Donald Trump was about to be elected president of the United States. So, so uh, gave, uh, gave us this, this new uh, boost of uh, energy to 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 put more ideas in in this previous uh, uh, premise, I think. So I'm... yeah, and everything uh, uh, mixed up with uh, a curiosity and uh, a wish, a very uh, 
through which to 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 portray uh, some uh, beautiful aspects of uh, Brazilian culture inside the system of the genre cinema, because we don't have uh, this tradition here. We don't do many genre films uh, in our history. We, we only have uh, maybe Coffin Joe. Uh, it's the international name for, uh, for uh, José Mojica Marins, Zé do Caixão. Uh, it was in the 60s and 70s. And, and, and after him, uh, nobody did uh, anything uh, of horror film or westerns or, you know, genre cinema. So we always loved, uh, me and Kleber, we, we became friends because, uh, because of our love for genre cinema. And uh, we always wanted to do a film like that. So, yeah. Just to There's an interesting uh, aspect about the, the Marxist, uh, sometimes we get the, the question with, with Marx, uh, it comes into, into the discussion. But actually what we did is, I mean, we, we really, we are really interested in, and we find it um, so dramatic um, when, when capitalism leaves so many people out of the game because you're supposed to be part of the market and you're supposed to spend your money. But what happens when, when, when the reality of, of so many people is to live on the on the fringes, on, on out, basically outside uh, the reality of capitalism. And this happens in so many places. It happens in the United States, it happens in Brazil, it happens in Africa, it happens in Europe. Um, and of course, we look at the favelas in Brazil where people make their lives livable through interesting, creative hacks. <laughs> I think they're called life hacks, uh, which are sub, um, they subvert capitalism and, and, and they find ways to like, uh, for example, in Bacurau, the film begins with Teresa coming back to the, to the little village and she's bringing a suitcase full of, full of vaccines and medicine and, and we even discussed extensively that, that uh, Teresa stole that from a hospital where she, where, she, um, where she works. That's not in the film, but, but we still like the idea that she stole it because it's going to be put to good use. And a lot of the way Bacurau works is, it is Marxist in a way, but it's actually first and foremost, it's reality. I mean, the people make it work and they make it work by getting together and, uh, and, uh, and making uh, a system function in a, in a very human uh, and communal way. Mm. This, this uh, kind of segues into my next question, actually, that's... Um, kind of about like the corruption and power relations or the theme of that in the film. Um, you were depicting this socialistic utopia or perhaps not utopia, perhaps reality in which mutual aid and sexual liberation and gender fluidity kind of facilitates this anti-capitalist, anti-big pharma, anti-militarism ideology. Um, like specifically the scene where uh, Sonia Braga reminds the mayor that horrors pay taxes too. I really like that part a lot. Um, and it really stuck with me. Um, and it feels sort of like particularly directed towards an institution or like a specific power structure. Um, and I'm wondering if you could just elaborate a little bit on the reception of the film in Brazil and who you made the film for. Um, and I'm also, also Udo Kiel's last line really stays with you. That's, uh, that goes, this is only the beginning. And I'm wondering who you imagine him saying that to. Actually, we have to admit something here. Uh, this idea for this is only the beginning line is from Udo's. So uh, he, he suggested we, we thought it was very, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, let's let's shoot this, and then uh, we decide if, if we're gonna use it or not. 
and of course uh, it was brilliant. And was was it was he initially not supposed to say anything? At the uh, end? Yeah, no, no, just uh, just the image of uh, him being buried. Well, and originally, the he was he would be executed uh, much like um, a World War Two execution at the end. Oh of yeah. The war. Uh, many there are so many f images and photographs and films of Germans being executed and you know shot in the head and into a grave and but then at some point i I told Giuliano we've seen this so many times we we should go for something else and and then we came up with the idea of of him going down in some strange um, ceremony, which <laughs> that the, group, sorry, Please yeah, the, the the audience doesn't really know what's happening, but he knows what's happening, and 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 the community knows what's happening, much like in the Wicker Man, which is a wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was kind of thinking of the Wicker Man actually. I was yeah. like, if you had kept it in the original way, that would have elaborated on the previous like the uh, like joke about. Urukia always playing a Nazi, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I think is kind of hilarious. Um, but I'm wondering if that is like part of like a larger critique of like um, the like right wing wave that's been happening in Europe and like white supremacy having gained more power in recent years as a general. We never wanted to use these words. But everything in, in those characters points to the fact that they are most likely white supremacists. Yes. Mm -hmm. The word yeah. racism is not in the film. I, I don't yeah. think it's, it's not in any of my three films. Although situations of uh, racial um, prejudice uh, are very clear dramatically. Mm -hmm. but, but every time you use the word, it just becomes like, um, let, now let's discuss uh, racism or let's discuss uh, sexism. So I think dramatizing a situation and not really, not really calling it by the name is stronger, I think, in a film. In real life, I think we should call it and, and say what it is. But dramatically, I think, in a film, uh, it's stronger when, when you, you, you're, you're, you're a witness to the situation and, and, uh, and the situation unfolds, like in Bakwarao. Yeah, I mean, I think it is actually really clear in the way that the different, um, the different attackers in the group have their own personal rationale for dehumanization. Yes. Like, I would not ch kill a child, or I would not kill a woman, um, which feels sort of... Uh, it also like, comes from war. Um, mm. Because at some point during the script, I, I began to get this vibe that it was a war film. That it doesn't really come across so clearly, I think. I, I, I think in my, in my mind, it doesn't really come so clearly, come out so clearly when you see the film in the cinema. You think more of horror and thriller. Um, I might but be the, wrong. The ways in which it, it's a war film, it feels more like dramatic, dramatized and Shakespearean than anything, I think. Yeah. The, the, the the thing with the each character trying to find a way to rationalize his or her violence is is classic uh, um, war atrocity situations. Uh, I remember this a group of men in the Bos in the in the Bosnia war, and they were trying to explain that yes, they did take part in a massacre but they didn't kill any women or children. It was only men and, um, and from 16 years old, uh, 16 upwards. So that was their rationale. And, and I find it absolutely, uh, I don't have a word for that, but that's how humans operate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You started uh, this, uh, this question talking about uh, ut utopia. And I wanted uh, just to say something about this. I, I think uh, it comes with the idea with the uh, of the building of this this community. Uh, this community is the key for that because this community is a community that lives in an isolated area uh, uh, in the Sertão, 
uh, it's like a Brazilian outback, something like that. And we, we are not from there. We come from the big city. We live in the big city. And, but uh, at the same time, we never wanted to, to do something uh, very distant from us because we don't believe uh, this is a good thing to do. It's not honest to make a film uh, uh, this way. So I think we, we, we got inspired uh, to build, to, uh, uh, to, to create, uh, to think about this community, uh, uh, inspired by our own uh, friends and circle of, uh, of uh, friends and family and people that we believe that are interesting and awesome people. <laughs> that uh, it's just uh, people like everybody else. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we, we, don't, uh, we don't think that people that come from that region is, is different uh, from us. That's the, the whole idea. So in our uh, way of living, maybe uh, it could be some kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, the most uh, make, makes more sense uh, to people like me and you to live like that. But uh, it, was, it was never an idea to create an, an utopia. Uh, we have uh, 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 some moments uh, that we put uh, some, uh, not, not uh, they, they are both portrayed uh, uh, in general as heroes, but uh, they, are, they, they do bad uh, stuff also. So, uh, yeah, I think. Mm. Uh, there's, there's something in the way that the citizens of Bacurau seems like almost immune and like indifferent to power structures, which I find really charming and like such a relief to watch on the screen. Um, Kiba, did you want to say something more to this? Otherwise, I'll move on to the next, to the last question. I, I, I think power structures exist in Bakura, but they are very, uh, they, they are more related to the heart, I think. Um, you have Dominguez, she's the doctor and she takes care of everyone. And mm -hmm. In fact, secretly, I don't even think she's a, a real doctor. I think she's um, a very experienced nurse. So that's also part of the, this system of things that, work somehow but um mm. but, but not in the in the official in 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 the yeah in the official way um it's it, interestingly sonia was not really into that idea she thought that domingo should be a real doctor um, and and i think we discussed me and juliana many times that she i see her as a as a very good nurse who took over the for the complete lack of um, of uh, medical care in, in, in the community. In fact, the real life community does not have uh, a doctor or um, um, a little uh, hospital like that, uh, the way we, we, we depict it in the film. That's all production art direction, mm -hmm. which is very sad. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I think, uh, and, and of course, the teacher uh, at the school, I mean, he's, he's one leader, he's a black man and he's a leader. Um, yeah, I, th I his think- mother, that, His mother was an educator also, and she was the leader and she, di she died and the film starts in her funeral. So it's a dynasty of black educators. Yes, so. and, and women are very strong. Yeah. And when we were looking for locations, the script was already written. Um, we found this location, which would be our number three in the list. And, uh, and then we saw a, a bust of a, a statue in the middle of uh, the central square. And we, we walked over to have a look at the statue and it was the bust of a woman and she was a teacher. And we were so moved because uh, that's what it is. That region is, is really special. I mean, uh, the kinds of things that you see in real life, they're exactly what fed us uh, to write the film. And, and it's Another a, example is the museums. We, we found a lot of museums uh, uh, similar to that, that one in our, in our film. So it was something that we, we, we talked about and we discovered uh, 
after researching the locations that this is something that is a reality in many places. So it gives us some feeling of uh, safety to, to not uh, making, making up uh, a lot of things. Uh, things are real. Bacurau really exists mm. in Brazil, <laughs> you know, it's great. Okay, um, I have, I'm going to ask one more question and then maybe we can open it up to uh, other people who might have some questions. Um, there's something about the use of screens as like kind of like an emotional regulator in the film. Uh, for example, the scene in which Ellie Willow shows her mangled bloody fingers barely attached to the rest of her hand and she pathetically exclaims, help me, desperately holding up her advanced Google Translate device. And the two nude citizens of Baccarat stares down at her with a perplexed, urgent, and almost compassionate glance saying, do you want to live or do you want to die? Or the scene towards the end, where you see the entire population of Baccarat holding up their smartphones to photograph the pile of bloody severed heads of their attackers, which renders the citizens of Baccarat delightfully indifferent towards established westernized power structures. Could you talk a little bit about this? You start. You start? No, okay. <laughs> uh, no, no I, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear it. I, I just oh, said- I'm sorry. It's, it's about the screens. Uh, the no, 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 I got the question. I got the question. I like the, the mix of um, middle ages, with the future and the present and technology and i i'm i we got a lot of questions about the the heads of course the the severed heads the decapitated heads um and people always go back to the 1930s with the lumpion bandits and and lumpion was was a robin hood like figure who operated in exactly in that region. So Lunga would be a, a kind of um, eighth or ninth generation uh, uh, offspring of, of that whole movement. And, but one thing that people, all, I mean, uh, people always overlook what's very close to them. They always go back to the past. And I myself just mentioned the middle ages. But actually, uh, we see over, I mean, we have been watching on television and for those who actually want to see it, you can go to YouTube. There are many uh, prison um, riots in Brazil and they are, <laughs> they are hyper violent. Uh, you're, you're talking about um, 17 year old kids uh, ripping each other to bits, um, beheadings, uh, severed limbs, um, arms being chucked over the wall, and things like that. So that is the violence I think that Lunga has probably witnessed uh, firsthand and that's why he is so violent. It's not because of, because he read so many uh, history books on Lampion and the bandits in the 1930s. Even. So people kind of overlook what's really close to them. And, and I think um, the world is a very violent place. And, and, and if you're going to deal with graphic violence in the film, you should, you should really deal with graphic violence in the film. Uh, Giuliano, did you want to say something to that or should we move on to the next question? Uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, I, I think uh, what, is, what Kleber is, uh, is talking about uh, is something, but uh, you are talking about the, the, the devices, right? Or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, it's only something very short, short, uh, very brief. Uh, the thing with those devices, I think we, we, when we started to talk about making a film uh, uh, a few years from now, uh, we started to talk about uh, some uh, 
futuristic uh, elements that could be uh, put in, in the film. And of course, uh, the film uh, is full of uh, John Carpenter's influences. And uh, like John Carpenter did a lot of times in his, in his car career, in his films, uh, the simplicity of uh, those sci-fi elements, it's, it's the key to, to, to that. And, and uh, I remember uh, when he put the uh, uh, biker helmet, uh, he, 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 he took the, the biker helmet from, from the, the character's head and put it on his face. And this is, this now it, this is an android, a, a robot or something like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's this kind of uh, visual ideas. And uh, of course, those uh, transparent uh, devices are something that doesn't uh, really exist in, the, in our day-to-day uh, -day life, but uh, it's something that could be in the market uh, in two or three or five years, maybe in, in the future. So, so this is something. And uh, for me, it's I, I don't like uh, the image of cell phones in cinema. I don't like the cell phone in, for dramatically. I mean, in, mm -hmm. in films. But we couldn't avoid because uh, it's a hunting uh, uh, situation, and people use technology to. And people use technology to, to erase uh, the community from the map. And so the technology uh, in, the, in the drone that, that, that is a, a flying saucer, disguised as a flying saucer. So uh, these small uh, uh, ideas of uh, uh, advanced uh, technology to, 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 to give this, uh, it's just uh, something to help uh, the narrative and, and the, 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 the the story and uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, I think maybe I, I answered you, I don't know. I'm watching now, uh, I May Destroy You, this British uh, television series and there was a lot of, um, a lot of stuff happening on screen with messages and, and podcasts and all yeah. kinds of, uh, it's very modern. And, and it's a very good series, but I'm not sure I would go there because it's, it's too much information uh, on mm. top of the information. I really like what uh, Olivia Sayas did in uh, Personal Shopper. I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's a very interesting use of uh, um, screens in a film. Mm. There is there's something about like technology as a whole, how like the attackers are fetishizing all this weapon technology and in Bakurao the technology seems like sort of unimportant. Exactly. Yeah, but I then it becomes de very decisive. Um, for example, the, the old school, um, uh, it's not a shotgun, it, it's something stronger that they use. Uh, we call it a bakamati in Portuguese. It's, uh, it's so strong, it has quite a kick and it has to be uh, sh used sideways. And that's very old, very old technology. I'm talking uh, maybe 160 years old. But it works and, and it works in a very precise moment in the film. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, I think we should move on to um some of the other people who have questions. Alina, do you want to take over a little bit? You're, you're muted. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> it took a moment to unmute myself. Um, thank you so much for this. Um, and Sophie, I'm so grateful for the questions and her answers, guys. Um, I'm going to start just reading questions from the chat. Um, the American actors seems like they are casted from the film Sharkando. Uh, Shaq, Shaq Nato. Sorry, Alina. Mm, okay, cool. Thank you. Um, they're amazingly flat in comparison to the Brazilian actors. 
this decision seems intentional. Can you tell us a bit about this process? Um, I actually believe that there is a, a, one of the, the, the tricks the film plays with the whole thing, with the first question that, uh, that, that we got. Uh, with the switching uh, switching um, roles and the whole thing with the cultural representation, I I love to get these questions where the where an American viewer sees the Americans as flat, because for us they were played uh, straight and we love the way they play in the film, and it probably sounds flat because it's so unusual to see American characters behaving in, you know, like a terrible, villainous people. And, and I find it fascinating that we get uh, those kinds of reactions. And, and they only come from Americans from the United States because um, usually uh, even other countries like Australia and, and Britain, uh, um, it doesn't really come off as, I mean, it's, I think it would be like um, watching an American film with the Brazilian actor. I remember the, um, the Money Pitch, it's a film produced by Steven Spielberg, uh, 1985, I think, with Tom Hanks. And the film begins, I don't know why, with a Brazilian woman, and she speaks Spanish. Trouble is we don't speak Spanish. So it's, we speak Portuguese. So it's, it's kind of, um, so all Brazilian audiences were like, what the fuck, I mean, why? So I think it's a similar, um, I think it's a similar situation that has to do with representation and, and this awkwardness of, um, I really loved uh, an article that was published in the New York Times on Spike Lee's new film, The Five Bloods which is a film that I saw even before, I saw it before I read the article and, and, and I had a lot of problems with the film because uh, the film now is made by a, a, a black American uh, filmmaker whom I love actually. I love uh, so much of his work. But this film, he, he brings uh, the same, uh, the same cultural uh, weight of the United States now through the black experience to Vietnam. And, and I think it's, um, it's a very complicated, uh, I think it's a very complicated film because it basically repeats everything that we have seen um, over the last 45 years uh, since Hollywood began making uh, films about Vietnam. And, um, particularly the way the Vietnamese characters are depicted. So this whole thing is always, is always fascinating and, and, and I love to get this, this reaction um, about representation, which is, which is interesting uh, to get this reaction for a change. I don't know if Giuliano has... I don't have anything to, to add. Uh, the, for me, it's the perfect example, uh, The Five Bloods. I think uh, when we wrote uh, those dialogue, dialogues and we thought about those characters, uh, we always uh, got uh, uh, a special amount of uh, time to think, to not do something like that. But uh, at the same time, it's, uh, the film is, is not about them. It's about that community. So maybe, uh, maybe who knows? Uh, we we put more love to, to, to the community and 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 I don't know, but uh, I don't think they they are flat. Actually, I don't agree with that. But you know, uh, uh, maybe this is the 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 situation. It's it's the representation uh, from Brazilian uh, directors making films, uh, talking about. Uh, people from, from other culture, I don't know. Um, Daniel, do you want to ask your question yourself? And also please, anybody who wants to ask their question uh, by themselves is very welcome. 
Uh, Ting is first in line. We're getting questions on the chats on the right, on the right oh, side. Oh, you are, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I missed that one. A uh, question about the, the drugs. Um, Ting, do you want to ask a question yourself? Or? Well, the, the, the question uh, with the drugs, I mean, uh, just recently it became a huge topic of discussion. The, the film keeps coming back in the media, in Brazilian media, because, uh, of course, uh, hydroxychloroquine chloroquine, uh, became uh, the savior drug for the Bolsonaro government, uh, just like um, Trump, just, just like uh, what Trump did with, with the same drug uh, in the U.S., and uh, and then they actually had uh, millions of bills made uh, to fight COVID in Brazil, and then they began to send it out to poor communities, just like in the film. So it came back as a Trojan horse kind of um, situation. Um, in the film, of course, sometimes as a Brazilian, we discussed this so extensively also, uh, sometimes as a Brazilian, I think that they put something in the water because people just don't react. And, and that was one of the ideas behind the Trojan horse. Uh, it um, just makes you stupid. Um, and, and that is, um, uh, Sonia Braga works as um, some kind of surgeon general and she basically says, don't take this, uh, I wouldn't, and throws it off out in the garbage. And then of course, on, on the other side, we have the, the little seeds, um, which come from Damiano, the, are, is like, a, it's like a sorcerer kind of a druid. Um, we thought a, a lot about uh, Asterix, the, the you know the french belgium uh, comic book character and uh, and and, and I, I think the the seeds make them stronger and give them some kind of edge and we're very happy that we never explain uh, what exactly is in the seed and and somehow that kind of leaves a lot of people uh, a little um, frustrated. They expect to get a full uh, chemical composition of the of the the seeds and for us it's just uh, it just works. They put it in their, their mouths and and that's the magic of it. It's, it's uh, another war element in the, in the film I think. The soldiers, uh, when when go to war, they they drink a lot of uh, alcohol and smoke so cigarettes. They, yeah, yeah, sure. Marijuana and but uh, it's something that I always uh, repeat to everybody. Uh, if someone offers you these seeds in the street, don't buy it because uh, it's a fake. Uh, it doesn't exist. It's just a narrative device. So, but. Uh, it's it's curious. Uh, uh, I think it was yesterday. Our, our president uh, Bolsonaro uh, said uh, to the in a press conference uh, that uh, people are dying in Brazil because they didn't uh, took chloroquine. I remember that. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> it's crazy. I also remember the this amazing sequence in Come and See, the Ellen Klimov film, and all the soldiers are basically getting smashed uh, to do the, the atrocities that they have to do. So exactly. I think drugs are part of war and, uh, and that's one way to, to get the job done in Bakura also. And of course, Vietnam War, all the, all the Vietnam War films, uh, the soldiers are stoned. Yes. So, so. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so Daniel, Daniel, if you want to ask her a question, uh, maybe um, say it in the chat so we can unmute you. But for now, I want to unmute Leo because he's got a question too. Um, I don't know how to. Juliana, can you see the Daniel, Daniel's question? Daniel's question, I, I, let me. Uh, 
Um, I'll the, ask a question so that I, everybody can just hear it. Um, if it's when, okay, you, unless you want to do it. For some reason, it's uh, it's it, it's like Zoom is adding an extra layer of complicated reality to its already complicated reality, and it's asking me to <laughs> to ask people to unmute themselves. So oh. Daniel, Daniel, I tried to unmute you. I, I can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, my question was about the, and it's written on the chat, but uh, there is one moment when the two bikers for the first time come to the village and jam the signal of the, yeah. Uh, yeah. There is an old man there with a guitar who often appears in the beginning and mm -hmm. he starts singing a song about them saying at some point I'm only messing with you. Uh, and that somehow creates this kind of very almost like underground sort of threat. I mean, they, for the first time, he didn't say anything specific, but feels like they're put on the spot that they're going to be revealed, you know. And my, I was curious, is there a tradition or is there anything specific kind of uh, in Brazil, actually, of type of singing like that, spring singing or something that's kind of this coming from, or is it like a, a yeah, invented completely? Very, from much. I, Very I, much. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a thing related to the humor of uh, our region, actually, to to mess with uh, people that think they are so smart and we are smarter than you. So this is uh, perfect for what we wanted to do uh, uh, in, the, in, in this idea of not being uh, the, you know, the fragile and uh, uh, unassisted and poor and they, they are very, I don't have the word uh, in English because my English is limited, but uh, uh, it's like, uh, it's the kind of humor that we have here. It's like uh, we, we just uh, like to, to, to make uh, musical pranks, let's say like this. Yeah, but they, they are also, I just wrote it on the, on the, on the chat. Uh, they are called the Hepentistas. They are they go way back and they're wordsmiths and they're very good with the way they play with words and they they can come up to you on the street and 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 basically uh, either pick on you or, or be incredibly seductive you know yeah they uh, are genius that's what they do they pick on those two and and he's very kind of um he's very kind of sarcastic and 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 that's where the the first uh, tension comes from northeastern region and southeastern region and and uh, it's it's quite um it's actually quite uh, uncomfortable for people from <laughs> from rio and sao paulo to to hear that of course if they don't have a sense of humor they are going to find it very uncomfortable because and of course, they immediately, because they are patronizing, they immediately think that the guy needs uh, some uh, some money. money. <laughs> yeah, and uh, sometimes it's it's just a, it's just a, a guy having fun, so it's great. But uh, that's that's something that more related to to that uh, character. Uh, we it's another another thing uh, connected to Asterix. Uh, it's like a bard of the community. In Asterix, we have uh, that bard, and we had uh, our own uh, bard in our film. It's great. That guy is that uh, that plays a guitar and annoys everybody. It's that idea also. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking about that. It's almost like there is this anticipation there. I mean, at that point, we still don't know who they are exactly and how how much damage they're going to do and all that. We don't know who they are. So this, in a way, kind of anticipates the whole, I feel like switches the agency. You know, they come mm -hmm. and they're outsiders who are going to do something, obviously. And then all of a sudden, with the humor and the kind of mocking, something, yeah. the, the agency switches from the beginning. Almost yeah. like anticipates the end in a, a kind of amazing way. But thank yeah. you. Yeah. I, 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 like, uh, dramat I like dramatic situations where you can't really put your finger on what is happening but you yeah. you feel that there is something that is not very uh, pleasant going on there is some tension underlying tension and uh, i think those are the best scenes i think in a script and, and the most fun to shoot i also enjoy the you know the the the, the overt obviously tense moments but 
But I really like that scene particularly because it's, it's funny and it, it's also unsettling. Yeah. And also from a Brazilian point of view, it's very kind of, there's stuff going on there. Thank you. Um, Leo, can you, can you speak? Are you unmuted? Hi. Yes. Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. Um, I, I first just want to thank you for this incredible film. It's really, really just wonderful. Thank you, Leo. Um, yeah. Um, I guess a thing that stood out to me a lot was this tension between the, the affirmation and denial of existence in relation to power structures. So, you know, you have the town trying to find itself on the map where it's disappeared, um, you know, and the, the professor's a little, you know, kind of caught up trying to find it, but then he pulls down the physical map and there's this, this primacy this, to that map and stating we're here. Um, and then I'm thinking of the bikers and something that's more identity oriented than place oriented, but this, this eagerness to prove that they are white and, mm. and like the, the, you know, sort of colonial type um, military people. And then also Uruki is like constant denial that they are there and that he, and also that he is doing what he's doing when he's shooting things. He's saying, I'm not doing this. Um, you know, there's, there's a, there's a real power in that if you have the power, you can disappear. Whereas everyone else is desperately trying to affirm. So I'm wondering kind of where the thinking to write that into the script came from as, as well as kind of having a, a speculation that there's some kind of Brazilian context for that, that, is you know unknown to me as a, an American viewer. Um, anything you can say to that uh, would be wonderful. I think it's a human context, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it's it's crazy because uh, we we see these guys uh, every uh, every every time uh, saying something and then denial <laughs> denying. It's it's everywhere. It's not only here, but here is is very uh hap happens a lot but uh yeah uh, I, I think i think uh people people that have power can do this kind of thing and and uh, it starts with the disappearance of the community uh, from google maps right and yeah i think that's I a think major the, display of power yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh it's the same thing uh, repeating uh, in many different uh, forms. Um, uh, when, when, when the teacher is, is, is uh, disturbed by the fact that he, he can't really find the Bakurao in, 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 in the digital map, I don't think he's, he's struggling to get power. I think he, he's just struggling to be seen and to exist. I think that's, that's a fundamental uh, aspect of living life. Um, it's almost like being part of this, um, being part of this situation here at Zoom and, and for some reason your microphone doesn't work and, and, and you can't really ask your question and, and all, you, all you want is basically to, to ask your question and, and, and then for whatever technical reason it doesn't work. I think that's, that's the, the, uh, a very interesting situation that we developed in the film. He basically wants to exist. Uh, he doesn't really. He doesn't really care about the rest of the world, but he wants to know that that little dot in the map is is where he lives, is where the children live, and and, and he wants the children to see themselves in the map. That's the main thing. Uh, just recently, I I I was really uh, I was angry at the the local uh, filmmaking community because they did this important election. And they basically forgot to tell everyone to sign up to vote. So I was really kind of pissed off at what they did because basically they did not offer the, 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 the opportunity for everyone who actually wanted to vote to vote. So that's the same situation. It's not that I want power. I just want, you know, to be represented by myself. And I think that's one interesting situation. About Udo's character, I think it's a different situation altogether because he's playing with power and he's incredibly cynical. 
he basically says that uh, he can prove with documents that they are not there. I mean, that's classic um, corruption. Um, that's a situation which is classic corruption. People can prove that you did things that you never did. And, and, and that's when things go very wrong in society. So yeah, there, there are, um, and, then, and then of course, towards the end of the film, he basically goes insane. That's my reading. Uh, he shoots someone and then he, he shoots a dog and he says, I'm not shooting any dog. And, um, and it also goes with what I said earlier about me avoiding the news because the news makes you mentally <coughs> ill because particularly in Brazil, they, they report on something and then they behave like what they're reporting is normal. So the weight of reality is subtracted from, from the reporting and that makes you sick because why, why isn't this getting the, the attention that it should, you know? And, and I think the film plays with all of these, um, um, the, the way fact is presented and the way versions are presented. And everything is connected to culture and society and politics. And, but now that we are talking here, it feels like we, we drew this like architects. We didn't. We were talking about the way we see things and the way we look at Brazil and the way we look at the United States and Europe. And so it probably feels like we are doing reverse engineering, but it's not the case. Uh, the it's, whole it, it script it, came very naturally. It reflects uh, specifically that time that we joined to, do, we, we joined together to, to write the final draft uh, and we spent uh, eight months uh, Monday to Friday, nine to five uh, working in this, in this uh, final draft but we were not isolated in, in a mountain, you know, we, we were always uh, reading uh, Twitter and Facebook and, and uh, uh, watching news and, and uh, watching videos that uh, popped up in, in our phones and discussing uh, the day-to-day -day situation in our country and, and outside. So all, all these, uh, these connections to, to, the, to the immediate uh, moments in the the planet in the you know i, I think uh, they uh, we, we 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 got a lot of ideas from that i think thank you um i'll ask a question if and i guess maybe if nobody else um jumps in maybe it will be the last one but i hope it won't be um in the in the film there is a vendetta um, component. Uh, it reminds me a little bit um, of films like Inglorious Bastards or I mean any any films that have to do with revenge where the victim um, has the upper hand at the, at the, at the, yeah, at the end of the film. Um, and this is very satisfying as a, as a viewer. But I wanted to ask you um, specifically, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about this relief and satisfaction that we feel at the end of the film, um, whereas in reality, um, I don't know if this optimism. Sorry? So, I, lost, I lost the end of the, it was cut here. Okay. Um, you you will, will talk about the end of the film and then disappeared. Okay. I, um, I will, uh, I'll start maybe from, from almost the beginning, but there is a vendetta component in the film where the, um, the hunted people, the victims um, have the upper hand um, and there is a relief. Uh, we, we finished the film with a, with a sense of, victory. Um, and I wanted to ask you specifically, how do you 
feel about that and um how do you how were you thinking about this kind of end where we're in the reality this kind of optimism is um i mean i want it but i don't know if it's um what we have right now uh uh, individually, I don't think th uh, it's optimistic in the mm. ending. I, I, I don't think uh, it's a vendetta uh, feel, uh, theme uh, in there. I, I think it's only reaction to something. It's survival and uh, uh, it's more like that, not, not vendetta, because uh, in the end they, they are not uh, celebrating anything. They, they are devastated. They are uh, really, really... Uh, I don't know the word, but they, they, you, you can see in their faces, they, they are not celebrating anything. They are, they are regretting, I think. So for me, it's not vendetta. It's just a reaction. They, they need to do something to survive, and they did. And uh, I don't think it's optimistic because this is only the beginning. <laughs> it's very clear. And uh, we, me and Kleber, we, we always, it's not in the film, but we always, uh, 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 imagine the situation of the reaction after the death of those uh, white uh, tourists that uh, came from another country and uh, what uh, would happen to, to the community after that. And I think the mayor, it's very clear about it. Uh, this, is, this is something <laughs> everybody here is, go is going to die. <laughs> so yeah, it's not optimistic for me at all. Um, the, my first film, Neighboring Sounds, has a vendetta situation. I think it's quite clear. But I agree with Giuliano. We never developed this film as a vengeance film because it's, I think this is a classic situation where somebody is, is attacked and is bullied and, and then he or she does something about it. Uh, or almost like a knee-jerk reaction and then an organized reaction. Um, because it just happens that violence has been part of their history and and the visitors failed to observe history which again takes us back to the Vietnam War with the United States and France um, France in the 50s the US in the 60s um, so we are fascinated by the whole history thing and how history informs how um, how the present unfolds in the future. Um, and then also about catharsis. Um, I love catharsis in literature and in, in cinema. Um, but with Bakurao, we, we have a very delicate balancing act because it is cathartic in a way because of what happens towards the end. But it's also um, a very heavy kind of, the community reacts. I mean, uh, I always remember jokingly the, the end of the Return of the Jedi, when all the little bears, uh, what are they called? Uh, Javas or Ewoks? Ewoks. E Ewoks. And they are dancing. Uh, and drinking, and they have bonfires, and everybody's happy. It works, yeah. Music. Music, and none of that is happening at the end of, um, at the end of um, Bacurau. In fact, um, we never discussed it, but when I saw the film at some screening, I, I thought for the first time of the ending of this wonderful film by Sergei Loznitsa. I'm not sure if you have seen this film. It's called The Blockade. It's a 50-minute documentary on uh, on um, the 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 siege around Leningrad, uh, Saint Petersburg. Um, amazing film done with uh, archive footage. And right at the end of the film, uh, Leningrad is freed from the Nazis. And then there is a, a firework display and, I, and everybody thinks that's the end of the film. 
And then that's not the end of the film. He gives us one final sequence uh, to, wrap every, uh, to wrap everything up. And I won't tell you what happens right at the end of the film because it really <laughs> should but, but that's one way of ending a film about war. You know, not with the fireworks and yeah, and everybody was happy uh, ever after. So I'm very happy with the end of Bakurao because uh, it, it really feels like something horrible happened. And, 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 and when, when you look at those faces, uh, people in the community, they all have this thing which is like, uh, this was so bad and, and we have to do it. And so we kind a, of had a balancing act there. It, it is cathartic a little earlier, and then the end is, is something else. And this reminded me uh, a very, I don't know if this is very specifically uh, from here, from Brazil, but uh, people here now uh, are filming everything with their, with, uh, their cell phones. But... Uh, even in the past, without the cell phones, uh, when a tragic accident, a car crash in the road happened, or, or a killing or, or a murder in a street, people stop to look. We have this strange uh, habit here. I, I don't have it, but a lot of people do. Uh, people just stop to look at, at that very ugly incident that is in front of them. And now people shoot this and put on internet. And it's very easy to see a lot of real footage of uh, tra tragedies. And uh, sometimes, uh, a lot of times maybe, in the theaters, uh, when, when we, we are in the screening of Bakurao, people laugh uh, when, when they, they see that image of a lot of people with uh, their cell phones uh, uh, filming the, the severed heads. But uh, it's not like, uh, it's, there's no humor on that. Uh, it's, it's, it's more like a habit, I think. I, I just wanted to say that because this is very, uh, there are many layers of uh, understanding of the film and we have a lot of aspects very, common in Brazil. Uh, people that live here can, can go deeper. And yesterday, this is what yesterday I saw the, the video footage of um, a hotel reception guy working and then uh, a guest arrives and he's going to, to do the temperature check and the guy starts screaming at him and then jumps over the counter and starts hitting the, the reception guy. And the reception guy is very patient. He's actually trying to push the guy away and then the guy keeps hitting him. And then the reception guy now begins to hit the guy and knocks him out. So it, it feels so good to see that. <laughs> I'm sorry, it feels really good to see it. Especially <laughs> when the guy just fell over kind of unconscious. Yeah. What an idiot. Uh, after after the, the incident uh, with uh, George Floyd, uh, it appeared in my timeline, uh, a compilation of uh, videos of uh, black people punching uh, uh, neo-Nazis or white supremacists and uh, edited with a lot, I mean, a lot. And uh, it was, it's very violent, but uh, they, it felt like they deserved to be punched. Uh, yeah, it's very complicated um, to discuss yeah, this. It's crazy, it's crazy. It's complicated. I love it. Um, <laughs> 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 to be clear, I love it. I love it. Um, best thing that was uh, said today. Um, okay, friends, we have room for only one last question because we're really past the time. Um, Rafael, do you want to ask it yourself? Um, maybe it will be a little complicated with all the unmuting, but um, I'll read the question aloud. Is it important to you both 
that your film is read in a specific political scene. Um, how do you feel about Pasolini in this sense? Well, first and foremost, we never set out to make a political film. The same thing with Aquarius. Aquarius is a very simple story about a woman. Larga tua mãe. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, and then it becomes political because it's, it's these are human situations and, and they, inv they involve um, some kind of um, some some conflicts that happen in in society and uh, and then they become political. Bakurao for me was would always be a, an adventure film, but done done not coming from outside, but coming from inside, and 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 then the the conflicts developed in the film and the dramatic scenes they all come from. Um, from how how bad we are doing as a society, so then it becomes political. But we don't wake up and say, "Let's make a political film." Um, I grew up watching um, films by Costa Gavras, the Greek French Greek um, filmmaker, and and he made political films, like Oliver Stone make, made political films because they were very splashy in, in the way they were political. And, and, and some of those films are not actually bad. They're, I think Missing is, a, is an interesting film, but it's, it's very obviously political. Um, Salvador by Stone, also a very political film, and Born on the Fourth of July. And, and Pasolini, I think, um, he made films about life in society. And, and then when, when he puts Terrence Stamp with that family, it becomes a political film because it's about differences. And so that's, I think cinema, I think it's actually quite natural to make a, a, a film that ends up being seen as political. What I find unnatural and it should, I think it's always must be a lot of hard work is to make a film completely devoid of any political um, content or any political understanding. Or I, I find it, uh, for me, it's very natural uh, when you think about human conflict, you know, um, any aspect of human life. Uh, Ordering a pizza is a political situation, depending. Now more than ever. More than ever. Um, so I, we don't, we never really discussed um, the effect that a scene will have. But for us, it was every scene in the film it, it, it is important for us. Um, you know the way he dumps those books. Um, this week, uh, again, Bacurau was again uh, discussed in the Brazilian media because the, the, the minister of the economy, he said in the press conference that he's going to bring back uh, taxes for books because obviously books are only uh, in interesting for the elite and the elite of course has money to buy books. And of course, the the poor communities will get books anyway from the government. And then he mentions he joke he jokingly refers to those books which are the uh, you know the old uh, discarded books. So the film comes back because in the film this truck dumps the books uh, in front of the school as some kind of a gift from the mayor. So, and then it becomes a political thing, but these are things that we've been observing and witnessing as Brazilian citizens for so many years and it's in literature. And so it's not really a film about the future, it's a film about the past and, and, uh, and then it becomes political. And I think um, never, I never, I never thought, I never thought about that until I heard the word Pasolini um, 
But I really identify with what Pasolini did in his films because I don't think he set out to, to make political films, but he made films about relationships that happen, situations that happen in society. And, uh, and that's when you would become political. If you uh, struggle too hard, I don't think uh, the, the result is interesting because you're really trying to scream and and I think, um, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question. Um, I believe you did. Um, friends, I'm gonna, sum I'm gonna summarize this, um, we'll wrap it up. Um, if anyone else, Anthony, do you wanna jump in, say anything? No, just thank you guys so much for being here. And thank, thank you, you so Sophie. much. Thank you, thank for, you for inviting us. Thank you for all this on this incredible work. Thanks, Alina, for managing. It's always a pleasure, but it's, it's also, um, I mean, the, there are so many complexities about everything that we try to do and, and some of your questions also. And, and that's the time we have. And, and I hope uh, we made sense more than not making sense. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pleasure. <laughs> making um, such a wonderful film. And thank you for creating the character of Lunga. It's like, I'm obsessed with that character. Yeah. Lunga, Lunga is a national hero. Here yeah. In <laughs> People are making tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, it's true. There's um, one reason we want to develop a yeah. second film, but we don't have any yes. good yet. <laughs> People well, love. To, um, it's essential, essential work. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you. Clever and nice. Giuliano, thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony and Eke and Daniel and Anna Sophie. Thanks so much for the questions and leading the discussion. Thank you, everyone. I love you. The, I love the little hands uh, going like this. The little hands. <laughs> I can. I can hear. This, this is Olga, she, she wants to say hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, our finishing routine is that everybody's clapping. She, so she, li she clap liked the, the Anna's, she liked Anna's hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, thank you. <laughs> um, we'll see you all in the fall pretty soon. Thanks everyone for uh, coming. Thank you. Bye-bye, good night. Hey guys. Take care. Good treat. Ciao.